Okay, what do you remember about, what did you write down about your little shaky shaky model? Somebody go first. What did you write down? Austin. I just drew a picture of it. I'm not sure all the movements and everything and how I just think there's a lot of structure and like, I think the numbers X and O and when an X goes in. Because if there's a lot of structure and X comes out of it, there's a lot of structure. They just replace each other. <coughs> so you talked about this. I'm just going to shut the lights off for a minute <coughs> so you can see it a bit better. You talked about how as one leaves, one comes in. Yeah. And you labeled those looks X and O, but that's all right. So, or I mean, does it really matter? So as one goes, when what goes out? What What is this in this case? Not X and O, but sodium chloride. So this is NaCl, what state? Is that pile there? Solid. Solid. And what's over here? Sodium chloride. Right, sodium ions, Na plus ions, and Cl minus ions. And for every one sodium chloride that comes out, one sodium chloride comes in. Happy? Okay. But I asked you to talk about in terms of polarity of water. But let's just finish this conversation. So sodium chloride goes into these ions. These ions are aqueous. Yes? <coughs> this is the bulk of our lesson today. Right there. But before I get there, this page whatever you have open, 122, is talking about why water is such a good solvent. So I asked you to talk about the ionic bonds. So when they come out of here, they're a big crystallata structure, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I've got a Cl minus... Pardon me, Everett? Um, every Cl minus is attached to one chloride, and then it builds off of that. No, what did, what did you say, actually? Do you remember? No. Okay, so every Cl minus is surrounded by sodium. sodium ions. So one below, one to the side, one to the other side, one to the other side, and one in front, one behind, but I'm not going to bother doing those. And it is sodium, I have a chloride, chloride and chloride. below and above, right? And those two might even be attached. And you can see how we get a whole, what's this called? Crystallized. Okay, so have you written crystallized structure on yours? Have you drawn this on yours? Because I don't see any pens moving. So I'm assuming you've either drawn this, <coughs> since I asked for you to draw the crystallized structure. And these are called ionic bonds, of course, which is our whole first unit. Yes? And those ionic bonds, when they hit the water, break. as long as they're not saturated, they break, right? Why do they break? Because they're attracted to the water. What? It is attracted. What is attracted? Ions. The ion. The ion is attracted to the water. So here's water. H-O-H. Again, unit one. Not ionic, but molecular. It has all these properties, shared pair of electrons, etc. What is special about water that's going to attract the Na plus? It is polar. And the top end, the, or on the top of what I've drawn, the oxygen end is relatively negative. negative. And the bottom end is relatively positive. And so what's attracted the top end? <coughs> what do I have that's positive? Sodium. My sodium ions are going to be more attracted to that end than they are to the chlorides. And the chloride end, the chlorides are going to be attracted to that end. So why is water such a good solvent? Because it's polar. And the ions are attracted to it. Is that what you wrote down? Or something like that? Okay. Is 
Everybody okay with that? So I'd like to rub it off the board in a second. Okay, any questions on lattice structure, water polarity, <coughs> attraction of the ion, ionic compound, and then the attraction of the ions to the water? And does everybody understand why water is such a good solvent? Yes? What if I, I didn't have water, but I had something that was a little less polar, right? With a big non-polar end and then a little polar top, like, oh, vinegar. Vinegar would be less good of a solvent because it is less polar and therefore there would be less of these attractions because that would be less strong. Make sense? Okay. All right. So I said that this was making up the bulk of our lesson today. I'm going to draw this a little less uh, picture-wise and a little more sciency-wise. And I'm going to say this NaCl solid yeah, is going to be dropped into <coughs> solution, whether it's like whether I'm meaning before as it's just dissolving or whether I mean here as it's going into solution, doesn't really matter. I mean both ways. And it's going to become two things. What are those two things it becomes once it's dissolved? Sodium. Sodium. The proper name for it is sodium ion, ion aqueous, and chloride ion aqueous. Do you see how this is the same thing as that? Yeah? Okay. This is called a dis. Association question or equation. Dissociation equation. Where this ionic compound or the ions are going to dissociate from each other. Do you know what it means to dissociate yourself from a group? Do you know what that means? I'm going to dissociate myself. I'm going to distance myself. I'm going to break all contact from them. Okay, so this is a dissociation equation because these ions are going to dissociate away from each other. Nothing to do with each other anymore. Make sense? And can you see how this is kind of just like what you did in science 10? When I said, hey, sodium chloride, write the ionic compound in science 10. And you would have said, sodium is Na plus and chloride is a Cl minus. And I'm going to put them together. <coughs> And make NaCl. <coughs> See, it's like the opposite of that. So it's no different, but I've written it like in this like nice pretty line that looks really smart. But actually, it's no different than you did from science ten. Okay. So therefore, the dissociation equation for something like oh, let's go with um, calcium oxide. Oh, that's a bad one actually. But let's choose it. Let's go magnesium oxide a little bit better. So magnesium oxide dissociation equation would be? Magnesium ion. Magnesium ion, Mg2 plus aqueous, and oxide ion is? Oxygen. O, two minus, everybody should be saying the answers here. Aqueous. Aqueous, because we should all know it. Everybody get it? Yes? Okay. Magnesium chloride. <coughs> MgCl2. This is going to so dissociate into Mg2 plus, yeah? Cl and Cl minus, Cl minus aqueous. Right? But in my crystal lattice structure, how many chlorides do I have for every magnesium? Two. So how many chlorides do I have for every magnesium? Two. See that? Two chlorides for every magnesium. So I need this big two. What about sodium, uh, no, in fact, what about calcium nitrate? Calcium nitrate solid would become, what are my two ions that exist there? 
calcium with charge? Two. Two plus aqueous and my other ion? NO3. NO3 charge? Minus. Minus state? Aqueous. Okay, done that. Now, how many calcium ions for every how many <coughs> nitrate ions? Two. Two nitrate ions, and the number in front of calcium is a one, but we just don't write it. Make sense? And those are called dissociation equations. So let's go back to your SNAP booklet here. Uh, let's see if we've missed anything. The importance of aqueous solutions. We kind of we did, and we didn't kind of do that. We did do that. Energy change of formation. Fine. No, we haven't done that though. Okay. So when we were uh, do you guys know what exo and endo means? What's exo mean? It releases heat. And endothermic means we absorb, absorb heat. Okay? Fine. So if <coughs> I break bonds, that's an endothermic process. <coughs> Uh, Everett. I need a volunteer. Who would like to volunteer? I said Everett, but Katie, come on up. No, I'm not going to make you write anything. Uh, this, we're going to pretend that this is a bond, and we're going to pretend that one end is a carbon, and one end is another carbon. Or actually, let's make it an ionic bond, so that's what we're talking about right now. This is a sodium end, this is the chloride end, sodium chloride, ionic bond. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Don't take the lid off, that's not the same thing. I want you to actually break this bond. Go ahead. Just snap it? Mm-hmm. Okay, did that take, e it's, it's, it's fine? Okay. <laughs> did that take energy? Uh, yeah. Was it an endothermic process to break that bond? Yeah. Could you have put energy into it? Yeah. Mm, okay, if you can sit down. Okay. Everybody give Katie a hand. <laughs> when I see all those see all those splatter marks up there, that's brought to you by James Cheen, breaking a bond, endothermic process. If I'm breaking bonds, I have to put energy in to break it. Okay? So when I'm breaking that ionic structure, every single bond that was broken in that crystallata structure required energy in. Make sense? From the surroundings. When I'm... Did you write that down? Breaking bonds? <coughs> when I am forming bonds, though... That's opposite. It's exothermic. I get energy out of it. Okay? So, depending on if more energy was needed, as Katie has, to break all those bonds, then I got, so I have more energy required to break all those bonds, then energy was given out when I formed all the bonds with water. The, that ion with water formed a bond, that ion with water formed a bond, that ion with water formed a bond. Energy, energy, energy. Energy out, energy out, energy out. There's a balance to be had here. If more energy was required to put in, then there was energy given out. Overall, this is going to be endothermic. Overall. Energy in, energy in, energy in, energy out. Overall, more energy came in than went out. So overall, endothermic. <coughs> so my thermometer would go down because it's getting colder. Does that make sense? I'm going to get some chemicals. Come on. Uh, write down the chemical symbol for ammonium chloride, please. Ammonium Um, Brett, would you 
please grab a beaker? Come on up. Quick, sure, fill it with water. Over here. You guys are going to push those tables back. You keep moving our ta my tables forward. Here. You're going to squeeze in here. Push, just push that table back, will you? Give yourself some space. All right, take the temperature of the water. It's not moving. It's not moving. So what's the temperature? It's 24-ish. Okay. Brett, can you please add some... Uh, what did you guys write down? Just pour it. Just dump some in. Like how much? Like a reasonable amount. Sure. Mix. Stirring? You might need a bit more. Mix with the thermometer. You can start stirring, Austin. Okay, let's dissolve that ammonium chloride. So we're all writing down NH4Cl solid is becoming NH4 plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. Agreed? What am I breaking? What bonds am I breaking? <coughs> what bonds am I breaking, you guys? Same ones as before. Ionic. <coughs> and that will be endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic. Endothermic, because breaking always is. What bonds am I forming? Pardon? Between the water and the water and the ions. And forming bonds is? Exo. Exo. Austin, how's the temperature coming along? It is still the same. Oh. Should we grab a different thermometer? No. Oh, okay. Don't worry. All right. Go ahead. Right. How's that thermometer coming along? It's going down. It's going down. So the temperature went down. So in junior high, you would have said that that was what kind of a process? Excellent. Endothermic, Endothermic process. Endo overall. So what does that tell you about the energy of the breaking versus the forming? There's more energy being used to break that ionic compound than there is when I'm forming it with the water. Does that make sense? So this energy is greater than this energy here. So the breaking and the forming, the energy breaking is bigger than the energy forming. If the thermometer, thanks boys, you can go sit down. If the thermometer went up, which sometimes it does when I'm dissolving, if the thermometer went up, it'd be the opposite. The energy forming must have been bigger than the energy breaking. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's a little like tidbit about solubility that ties solubility with endothermic and exothermic from Science 10. And it's a springboard for our chem for a unit in Chem 30, just like we also had a springboard of the dynamic equilibrium for Chem 30. So there's all these little springboards. So there's a little springboard for you, where I have I'm separating the ions, I am forming. So every chemical reaction involves breaking and forming bonds. So every chemical reaction will be endothermic or exothermic overall, and it's just the balance between which one must have been greater in order to have it be overall endothermic or exothermic, okay? Every company makes money and spends money. It's the balance between the two as to their, whether they've made money overall at the end of the year or gone into the red at the end of the year, right? That's what this is about, the spending and making energy. The question is, have I spent more than I've made or have I made more than I spent? as to overall whether I am happy to give my annual report to the board or not so happy.
Okay. All right. Um, anything else we missed in these pages? I don't think so. Da -da 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 -da. What's an electrolyte? You know one. Just a reminder. <coughs> Conducts electricity when it's dissolved. Good. Free ions. Remember? I'm going to come on electricity because the ions are free to move. Did you see the ions free to move in your simulation? Oh, yeah. Non-electrolyte doesn't connect electricity because there aren't any free ions. Okay, so there's the dissociation equation. We've done this, haven't we? Yep. Love. <coughs> Look at the ones on the next page. Hands up if you know where that big two came from. Hands up if you know, I'll point again, where this big two came from. Where did it come from, Brennan? Uh, because there's two potassiums from each SO4. Good, so this two came from that little two. If there's two potassiums for every one sulfate, then I get a two. Why don't I have a four here? I see a four there. Why don't I have a big four here? Good, because it's in a big bag. That SO4 is an SO4. It's like a bag together. Okay, I, don't, I only have one SO4. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, same thing, same jazz. Okay, and they're electrolytes because I have free electrons, right? We're not going to do ionization just yet. I'm going to first have you practice. So on, oh, actually, let's just have a little look at this little thing here. I was going to do this with you. You see these? See these? La, 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 la. I want you to list them in this table and tell me whether they are going to conduct or whether they be a non-conductor. Does that make sense? Yes? So the first one is? Water. Distilled water. Is it, gonna, is it a conductor? No. Distilled water, not tap water, distilled water. No. No, because it has? No. No free ion. It's molecular. What's the next one? What is it? Ethanoic. Ethanoic acid? Ethanoic acids. Conductors or not? Yes. Yeah. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because we've actually, it's not supposed to be. Weak acids are not supposed to be conductors. But I know that in the experiment that we did, our weak acid did conduct. Our citric acid, it conducted, right? But theoretically, we're supposed to say it's a non-conductor. What's the next one? Potassium nitrate. Conductor or non-conductor? Hmm? Yeah. Psionic? It's a conductor. <coughs> Junior class change. Can you do the rest on its own? Okay, so we'll do the rest of the time. We'll have a little um, how out to make sure you've got them right. And then we will uh, go on to dissociation equations.